Hello YouTube and welcome to uh, Politics 101 if you will. This video is going to look in depth at the uh, British election campaign leading up to uh, tomorrow's historic election. It's going to look uh, in depth at uh, the three major parties and what they stand for, what their policies are and uh, yes and how the internet and how television particularly have both really impacted on this particular campaign in a way that has never really happened before in the UK. Possibly the biggest difference uh, in this election campaign compared to others has been the Prime Ministerial uh, leaders debates on television. Uh, it's something that's never happened before in the history of British politics and something that has really, really been a game changer this time around. Uh, it's a format which is pretty familiar. It's been, uh, it's been used across the world for many, many years. They've had it in America since the 50s, uh, and it's something that they've been fighting to have in Britain for a long time. Uh, the party in opposition has almost always wanted them. The party in government has very rarely wanted them because the government effectively obviously has it all to lose. Uh, it's a format that this time around has really helped the Liberal Democrat Party in particular because the Lib Dems have always been seen as the third party. They've always been seen as the party that are never effectively going to stand a chance of actually winning. They are just basically there in the event of a hung parliament. And a hung parliament is a situation that this time around really does seem quite likely. So the fact that Nick Clegg and the Lib Dems have had so much exposure from the, the first debate in particular, but it, all three debates have really, really changed the political landscape. In the run-up to the election before the debates, uh, it was basically it was a two-party race. Uh, the Conservatives had about 38-37% uh, opinion poll rating chance of winning. Uh, Labour had about a 30% chance and the Lib Dems were trailing miles behind on something like 17-18 average, depending on the poll you were reading, depending on what day you were reading it on. Uh, that's totally, totally changed now since, uh, since the debates. The Lib Dems are now actually, uh, in most of the polls, they are actually the second party uh, with Labour being pushed down even into third, which is a, a total shock for many. And whether it translates on polling day, uh, we can only wait and see. So what are the parties actually standing for? We'll start with the Liberal Democrat Party. Uh, they purport to stand for a fairer government and a fairer system of government by which if uh, MPs are found to be committing the sorts of, uh, the sorts of fraudulent acts that uh, led to the expenses scandal, led to the economic uh, crisis, then uh, basically you, you would have the power as a, uh, as a citizen of the UK to basically vote throw out your MP. Uh, currently the system basically works that once you, vote, once you elect your MP at the, uh, at the election, they basically they can do what they like for five years, they make the rules, they make the laws, and it's, there's not enough uh, governance on what they're doing is, uh, is the view of the Liberal Democrat Party. The Labour Party, led by Gordon Brown, has effectively pledged that no matter what, uh, they won't take money out of the economy this year. Uh, they believe that taking money out of the economy now could uh, force the economy back into recession and that it would ultimately not benefit anybody at all. Uh, the Conservatives vehemently disagree with this. They want to take six billion dollars, uh, six billion pounds I should say out of the economy now uh, to allow for more public spending elsewhere. They think that there's enough efficiency savings that can be made just purely out of government efficiency savings to, uh, to basically free up cash for spending elsewhere and that this could actually benefit the economy in the long term. Uh, the Conservatives have been supported in this view by various uh, Various big corporations, uh, Mark and Spencer's, Mothercare, have all come out uh, in favour of the Conservatives. But that being said, uh, economics experts from around the world have actually supported Gordon Brown's plan. So again, we're uh, you know, it's it's one of these situations. There is no right answer, unfortunately. It's you know, either you take the money out now and risk risk recession, but also risk free, but also free up money for other things or you play it safe, but also mean that you know, you're know you gonna have, have to raise taxes and fill the deficit another way. 
because let's face it, there there is a deficit. There's you know there's an eighty eighty billion some are estimating even up to a trillion you know pound deficit that we're going to have to <laughs> find from somewhere, and right now we're not finding it. This has become an election based more, I would argue, on the candidates themselves rather than their policies. Uh, again, because of the leaders' debates, because of the uh, the power of the internet, there's a you know you can go to youtube.com forward slash uh, I think it's general election UK general election. I'll post a link below uh, to exactly what the site is. It might not. I can't remember exactly what the page is. And there's basically clips of uh, of the three main party leaders all giving what are effectively uh, sound bites. And I think that's basically what this election has become. It's become an election of snappy phrases, of easy quotes, uh, rather than uh, rather than really concentrating on policy. What that means is that it's actually to the detriment of the voter because I don't think a lot of people really know what anyone's standing for, what anyone really truly believes anymore. And at the same time, nobody really knows who to trust because of this. Uh, there's been record uh, record downturns in turnout in the last several elections, and whether or not that continues remains to be seen. But uh, a recent poll, at least here in the city of Nottingham, suggested that at least uh, three quarters of the voters were still undecided. With two days till the election on who they were going to vote for or even if they were going to vote at all. So it's not looking good for turnout, let's put it that way. Because of the system that the UK operates of having, uh, of obviously voting for a politician in a specific constituency, I don't think that this, uh, this persona-based, uh, almost presidential uh, leadership campaign has been uh, particularly positive for voters. I think while it's given people a better idea of who, you know, of who they want to vote for for prime minister, we don't we don't vote for prime minister. We vote for somebody who sat in a seat. And the worry among uh, many political experts is that people are basically going to get to the polling booth on uh, on Thursday morning and just say, you know, so where's where's Gordon Brown? Where's David Cameron on my polling sheet? And of course they're not there unless you happen to live in you know in their particular constituencies. You'll be voting for. A Labour candidate in one of these seats, you're voting for a Conservative candidate in one of these seats, and I think that's something that's really something that's really been lost because nobody, I don't think, I don't have many people could name who their MP would even be if they were just ticking a box. They'd be ticking a box for the party rather than voting for specifically for that MP and exactly what that MP stands for. Because obviously, in various constituencies, despite party political lines, there will be some things that some MPs will say, yeah, this is you know, a particularly strong issue here in my city, I'll fight for this, I'll fight for that. And I don't think we've seen enough of that in, the, uh, in local broadcasting. I think too much has been put onto the three leaders uh, of the main political parties. My opinion on the matter is if you don't vote, you lose your, uh, your right to complain for the next five years when stuff goes wrong. You know, if you don't vote, then who are you to say, oh, you know, this party's doing it wrong, this party's doing it, you know, not doing it right. You have every right to vote against them, but if you're not going to do it, then you can't then complain when what they, about what they do do. So yes, uh, get down to your polling booths, vote. I don't care who you vote for, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Uh, you know, anyone who follows me on Facebook uh, knows pretty much who I'm voting for. But yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna influence your vote. You can vote for who you like. Just get down and vote. Because that's uh, it's democracy working at its absolute best when the higher the turnout, the stronger the government's mandate will be, no matter who wins. No matter who's in power come Friday, it will be you who decides. And that is just about it. I will leave you with that. And with that I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.